power of reasoning together is on here again. We bless the Lord for helping us through day by day. And we believe the Lord is um, passing one or two things across to you viewers. May the Lord continue to bless us together in the name of Jesus Christ. We started a series on uh, grace. Why people abuse grace. We discovered that uh, the abuse of grace is so much among Christians. Christians abuse grace a lot. And so we cannot close our eyes to this. We have to address it. And that's why we have brought it to the open for discussion. We have had different Christians uh, on how people abuse grace. And we have been looking at this topic, grace, what it really means, why, how people are abusing it, and uh, what is really the cause of this abuse, and what are we, what are the important truth, what are important understanding that we need to have concerning grace. So, we have looked at how people have been abusing grace. We looked at it deeper than what people said during the interview. We have looked at it from two different perspectives. Those who feel, those who feel that grace is weak and so they need a support for grace. We have seen that and we have actually debunked that, that grace is not weak. It's only if we remove Jesus from grace. <laughs> that is when we have something and we will not even call it grace again. Uh, or if you call it grace, we will not call it biblical grace. Once Jesus is involved, because Jesus brought grace, <laughs> grace is not weak, because Jesus is not weak. And so, we have seen that it is not weak. It does not need Moses, it does not need Elijah, it does not need a Malachi to support itself. Jesus brought grace. Jesus is synonymous to grace. Grace is synonymous to Jesus. And Jesus is enough, is sufficient for every believer. And so, we have looked at the other extreme hand that says grace covers everything and whenever they use they use this slang mostly when they are doing things that are wrong so they will say and they are being challenged either by a non-believer or by their fellow believers that what they are doing is wrong they will tell you they are not under the law they are under grace grace covers they didn't pay anything to god to save them they were they are saved by grace and they are going to heaven by grace it's not their righteousness or their good behavior or their their whatever that gave them salvation and it is none of those that we we take the salvation away from them so they live their life carelessly they live it licentiously without any restrictions and we have also seen that uh, what they are saying indirectly is that Jesus is approving what they are doing, which we know from the word of God that that is not true. So once Jesus is silver from grace, is removed from grace, then it becomes a license to licentiousness. When truth, and we discover that truth must go, in the second episode we look at uh, causes of grace. We discover that many Christians do not understand what grace means and what comes along with grace and we have seen what came along with grace. we have seen jesus who brought the grace and what he brought along with grace which we cannot separate from it and that is the truth and so in this third episode we shall be looking at uh, some of the truths that came along with grace and until we understand this deeply and revelationally we will not be able to live well as christians in this episode, I will also again concentrate on only one uh, passage of the Bible. Although other passages may come in, but my main text under this episode is Titus chapter 2, verse 11 to 12. Titus chapter 2, verses 11 and 12. I will be reading from NIV, New International Version. So I will be reading from there, NIV, uh, Titus chapter 2, verse 11 and 12, verses 11 and 12. It reads, For the grace of God has appeared that offers salvation to all people. That is verse 11. For the grace of God has appeared that offers salvation to all people. 
people. I want you to underline that. It offers salvation. Underline salvation and then underline all people. It offers salvation to all people. Verse 12 says, It teaches us to say no. I, I, I want you to put that no in cap. It teaches us to say no to ungodliness and worldly passions and to live self-controlled upright and godly lives in this present age hmm isn't that deep ah you discover in the second episode i said jesus is synonymous to grace and grace is synonymous to jesus christ I hope you have seen how grace is being personified in this verse. It says, grace has appeared to all people. How can grace appear? And you can see that the personification of grace now. And what is he saying indirectly? He's saying, Jesus has appeared to all people. Jesus has appeared to all men. King James says, For the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared unto all men. So, grace appearing to all men, meaning Jesus coming to this world for the salvation of humanity. And so, that is the first understanding that we need to have. And I want to start from that end. The first truth that came with grace is that Grace brought salvation for all men, for all men. And what is salvation? According to an online dictionary, salvation simply means deliverance from harm, from ruin, or loss. Deliverance from harm, from ruin, and from loss. And the question is, what is more harmful and ruinous than sin? Hmm? What is more harmful and ruinous than sin? Nothing. 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 So if salvation means deliverance from harm, from ruin, and from loss, in biblical terms, Salvation means deliverance from sin. Of course, the word salvation is a noun. It is formed from the word save. And the way the Bible used that word save as a verb in Matthew chapter 1 verse 21, when the angel appeared to Joseph about the pregnancy, a controversial pregnancy of uh, Mary. Of course, G Joseph <laughs> was confused about how his fiancée, his wife that has been betrothed to him, got pregnant. And he was thinking of secret divorce because he knew that once that is made open, Mary will be stoned to death. And so he was, because they were still under the law. And so he was thinking, of, and then the angel appeared to him in his dream at night. And the angel told him that Mary is wife. That is verse 21 now says, She shall bring forth a son. And you, Joseph, shall call his name, or we call his name, Jesus. He now said, Because he will save his people from their sins. Sins. Plural. He will save his people from their sins. Save his people from their sins. Salvation from sins. And that is the main reason why Jesus came to this world. To save humanity from the ruin that sin has brought for us. From the loss that sin has brought for us. From the harm that sin has brought for us. And so when we talk of salvation 
in spiritual term, in scriptural term, we are talking of salvation from sin, deliverance from sin. And that is the first thing that grace has brought for humanity. And let's now be logical. If salvation means deliverance from sin, and somebody said he has encountered that salvation, he has experienced that salvation, the person is telling us that he has been delivered from sin. That is what it means. And now, logically, how will somebody now say that the grace that brought him or the grace that delivered him from sin is that same grace that covers his immoral life? Isn't that contradictory? Of course it is. And so those Christians who are living immoral life and they are still claiming that grace covers that means they, we can logically say that they have not been saved. If they have been saved, salvation means deliverance from sin. And if they are delivered from sin, how would they now be living again in sin and they now say that same grace that delivered them is the one that is also covering what they are, the evils they are doing? No, that is not sensible. Honestly, that is not sensible. And so, Grace brought salvation, deliverance from sin. And anyone who has actually encountered Christ, has encountered grace, has encountered deliverance from sin. And if a man calls himself, if any man calls himself a Christian, any woman calls herself a Christian, and he is not delivered from sin, hey, I will put a question mark in front of his salvation. Has he or she really been saved? Because salvation has to do with deliverance from sin. And 1 John 3, 9 says something very important. And it says, I'm reading New Living Translation, NLT. He says, those who have been born into God's family, those who have been saved, they have been born into God's family. Now, now it says, those who have been born into God's family, do not make a practice of sinning because God's life is in them. So they can't keep on sinning because they are children of God. In that verse, grace is equated to God's life in man. You have seen it again. That is another synonym Another thing, another phrase or that we can use life in a man's life. And once the life of God is there, it means grace is there. He is delivered from sin. And so he cannot continue to live in sin. He cannot continue to make a practice of sinning. Of course, we are not saying he cannot make mistakes. He cannot be entrapped. He cannot, he cannot be tempted. He cannot mistakenly fall. We are not talking of that. But to now make a practice of sinning as before he encountered Christ, then that means that would be very confusing. That would be very, very confusing. And so, the first truth about grace is it delivers from sin. Grace delivers from sin. Because of our time, let me look at the second one that comes with the truth that we must understand about grace. In verse 12, King James says, grace is teaching us to deny all ungodliness. But NIV says, it teaches us to say no to ungodliness. And what does that mean? Jesus who brought grace, it's a, 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 a complete package he brought for us. And that is what we must understand. Like I said before, lack of understanding of what grace really is, is what is causing the abuse of it. It's, grace is a total package. Now we have seen how grace delivers from sin. Grace will not leave you alone. Grace will not leave you at that point. Grace will not deliver you from sin and walk away and leave you with your life. No, grace will not do that. Grace will continue its work. That's the first stage of the work of grace. It delivers you from sin. And after that, 
the Bible says it teaches us to say no, to resist all unrighteousness and ungodliness and worldly passions. What does that mean? It means, let me use layman uh, explanation. Before we gave our life to Christ, before we came to the knowledge of that grace, before we came to grace, before we are delivered from sin, we were the one chasing sin around. We will chase a girl that we want to fornicate with. We will chase lying. We will be telling lies. We don't want people to know what we have done. We will be cheating. We will be doing all kinds of evils. But now that we have been delivered, we have come to the knowledge of Christ, God's life is already in us and we have been, we have been saved from those sins. Then the table will turn. It is sin and the devil now that will be chasing us. In fact, those from experience, those girls that you used to chase seriously and they will not agree with you. Now that you have given your life to Christ, you just discover that you will not be able to explain why those girls are, are winking at you, they are calling your attention, why all those evils, lying will just be coming your way, cheating will just be coming, all those evils that you have left will just be coming your way. And Jesus knew that this will happen after your salvation. He knows that temptations will always come. And so he says, grace will not leave you at salvation point. Then grace will continue with you. And then it will be working in you. It will be giving you that boldness, that courage, and that strength to resist unrighteousness, to resist worldly passion, to resist ungodliness, to resist all those evils. And that is the second work of grace. Grace will enable you to resist temptations and sins. And if that is not really happening to you, hey, I wonder what type of grace you have received. It says, it teaches us to say no unto ungodliness. King James says to deny ungodliness. Denying means you, you resist it. You, you, you don't give it what it's asking for, what it's demanding. The flesh, the carnal man, the Adamic nature in you. What is demanding? What is asking for? You are able. Grace is enabling you to resist it, not to give it, to deny it of those things. That is what grace does. And it is put in present continuous tense. It teaches us. So it is it, 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 not saying it has taught us at salvation. No, it keeps doing that. And so if you allow grace, it will continue like that in our lives until we leave this world. And the third thing, that grace does is that uh, Jesus knows that uh, when if when we are as long as we are in this world and they are well written in the word of God they are they are clearly stated in the word of God that once we have given our life to Christ we cannot but experience trials afflictions tribulations suffering persecutions we will always have those ones when we give our life to Christ so Jesus also knew that and so he packaged that again into grace. Take for example, I, I want to draw from Paul's life. There was a point Paul was saying that a thorn, a thorn was given to him on his side. The agent of the devil buffeting him. So he was having a serious trouble. A serious trial was going through it and he said he prayed to God three times that God should take away that thing from him but the only response God gave him which I want to use on this third aspect of the truth that comes with grace is that Jesus told him that don't worry my grace is sufficient for you what does that mean it means that when we are going through trials when we are going through afflictions tribulations suffering grace is also there to succor and to, 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 to support us through. That is the third thing that grace does. And the fourth thing is that in, 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 in Titus chapter 2 verse 12 now, I want to round it up there, and it says, grace teaches us to live self-controlled, upright, and godly lives in this present 
age. Now tell me what is not inside the package now. Beginning from salvation, deliverance from sin, and then on to being able, being enabled to overcome temptations and trials. I mean temptations, that is the, the urge to go back into sinning. Or when sin is drawing us, when the devil is setting sinful traps on our way, grace will help you to say no to unrighteousness, to resist ungodliness, to resist worldly passion. And thirdly, grace is sufficient for us when we are going through trials, um, trials, afflictions, tribulations, sufferings, which are also packaged in our salvation experience, in our work with God. And then lastly, it helps us to live godly, to live self-controlled, upright, and godly life in this present age. You can see now that uh, grace, if it is well understood, there will not be any abuse. And those that abuse grace is either they have not encountered grace, or they encounter grace, they don't allow grace to work in their lives. That, that, that is the truth. If you have encountered genuine grace, if you have encountered true grace, and you allow that same grace again, you have encountered to walk in your life, to walk through your life. All these things that we are saying will be dear. You will live such a, 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 a awesome Christian life. And when people see you, they will know that yes, this is a product of grace. This is truly a Christian. I hope you have seen it what we are actually talking about now. You have seen what grace actually does, what grace is, how it came, what it brought for humanity. If it is not grace, it is no other thing. It is something else. If it is grace, biblical grace, grace that comes from Jesus Christ, these are what it will do. And it is exactly what it is doing in the lives of genuine believer. If it is not doing that in your life, as you are watching me, then you have to check your life. You have to, something is wrong somewhere. If you are truly delivered from sin, and grace is not accomplishing the other three works it should accomplish in your life, something is wrong. Are you sure you have actually encountered the first aspect, the first work of grace, deliverance from sin? If you are, you are convinced, you are sure, you are so sure of yourself that you have encountered that, it means you are not allowing that same grace to continue its work in your life. You don't allow Jesus, you want to start from grace and then end with the law. Like uh, Paul called the Galatians, he called them, oh foolish Galatians, why will you start from grace? Why will you start from the grace and you want to end up with the law? And that is what Galatians were doing. They started with grace and they want to end with law. And if you are doing that, you are going to complicate your life. If it is by grace, let it be grace totally. If it is by law, let it be by law. But I can assure you, no man can be acceptable before God through the law. The Bible says no man can be made perfect by the deeds of the law. Law makes nothing perfect. It is grace that makes us acceptable and makes us perfect before the Lord and makes us grow mature in Christ Jesus. You have to check your life. You have to allow the grace of God. You have to surrender totally and allow Christ. I've told you, grace means Christ. <laughs> so if you, as I am saying, you don't allow grace, that means you don't allow Christ to do his full work in you through the Holy Spirit. That is all about grace. Grace is Christ in us through the Holy Spirit, working in us and working through us and working out of our lives. All by grace. Everything about our lives, our lives from the start to the finish should be by grace. By grace and grace alone. If you are not experiencing that, brothers and sisters, viewers, you have to check it and check it over and over and check it again and again. Lord, I thank you for the conclusion of this series. 
I pray that you will help every viewer to come back to you. And those that have not even come to you at all, they are only covering up under the umbrella of religion. They are just practicing Christian religion. They have not encountered grace. They have not been delivered from their sin. You will help them. And you will let grace begin its work in their lives. And those who have encountered grace, but they don't allow you to accomplish what you started, you will encounter them and you will help them to allow you to surrender to you, to allow you to finish what you have begun. Thank you, Lord Jesus. In Jesus' name we have prayed. God bless you, Rio God. Thank you.